The Aftermath of Book Week Well, Book Week was a blast this year with a plethora of author interviews available online and the launch of our new book-sided podcast. I hope you get a chance to listen in to our light-hearted chat. One of the highlights for me was the chance to interview the great Colm Tobin about Long Island, our big read for this season. It has been great too to receive lots of reviews from the many reading groups who have been reading Long Island this month. The feedback has been mainly positive, though like most books there there has been some mixed feedback as well. We had a super online reading group meeting as well with lots of you joining in and sharing your thoughts on the book. The online reading group meets regularly each month to discuss different books. Why don't you consider joining us if you are free on Thursdays over lunchtime? The next meeting is Thursday the 28th of November at 1pm. The book for November is The Book of Beginnings by Sally Page and it's available as an e-book and audiobook from our free Libby and Borrow Box apps. Anyway, back to Long Island. I thought I would share some of our readers' varied thoughts on the story. Most thought it was a great sequel to Brooklyn with a captivating start when Eilish is confronted by an irate man at her front door. But most agreed that it would also stand on its own if the first book had passed you by. I do think, though, that if you first read Long Island, you'll probably want to read Brooklyn anyway. The story is character-driven with strong female characters, which makes for interesting comparisons between Italian and Irish families, both who have strong matriarchal leads. Both are controlling and manipulative, claustrophobic in the case of the Italian influence and judgmental in the Irish one. Eilish's mother in particular punishes Eilish for only returning home after 20 years and becomes increasingly difficult with Eilish around the house. Until, that is, the grandchildren appear and she miraculously transformed to a doting grandmother and loving matriarch. Some readers thought that Eilish was irresponsible in rekindling the relationship with Jim, although I reckon that it was Jim who was in the wrong. Eilish didn't know about Jim and Nancy's relationship, so it would have been up to him to stop things progressing with Eilish. We all agreed, though, that Jim did himself no favours, taking what he could get and settling instead of moving on with his life after Eilish left the first time. There are a great many secrets being kept by many in Long Island and no one is very open about their true feelings or open to honest discussion. Maybe this is true of the time though. The 70s hadn't hadn't yet succumbed to the empowering culture of talking therapies that we now know. Everyone was agreed in the quality of the writing, of the accessible language and the skill of the author in both narrative and inner dialogue. The parallels between the two books are obvious with the ambiguous ending of both, perhaps leaving the door open for another sequel. In the interview, the author was non-committal about any plans to write a third. If you haven't already watched the interview, you you can watch it on the library website.